this is the next project that I'm gonna take on um, it's something actually that I designed back in I maybe finished it in December of 2016 and I had been thinking about doing something like this for quite some time uh, and it's it's actually just a carriage for longitudinal feed and also um, feed along the ways uh, in a controlled way a watchmaker's lathe has a tool post that is all um, the turning is done by hand um, which is fine for certain things but in this case I wanted to create some way to um, have a, a little more rigidity and stability so uh, the whole assembly is fairly complex and I've already received some feedback uh, online about how to make um, these ways here you can see uh, possibly if I zoom in here the shape of them is just square uh, there's no dovetail there's no angle and I was sort of planning on you know preloading the shaft um, to to sort of keep this uh, down in a downward way and and I just sort of figured um, gravity being what it is and the forces of the tool on the tool post everything would be pushing downwards anyway and if if you're familiar with a watchmaker's lathe at all obviously the cutting forces will be very minimal um, so I just thought that this would be a pretty simple way to do it however I like the idea of actually putting a sort of 15 degree angle on either side here 15 degree wall and then matching it with uh, the mating part and then leaving some area down here for wear and I'm also obviously going to put some type of oiling points you know maybe in here uh, to, to just get the oil around and also uh, probably up in this uh, up in this section here <clears throat> so um, it is sort of an intimidating project of course to do at home honestly I'll probably do some of it not in my home shop um, and I will probably cheat a little bit <laughs> uh, but you know I, I think all in all it's a worthwhile project so um, I do have drawings made up of the various parts um, this is the plate that the tool post would bolt onto. Plan on using mostly uh, ground A2 tool steel or something pretty tough for this. Uh, here you can see the call out for the hole that's going to go through. Um, this is going to be a threaded hole and it's a 3 8 24 fine thread. I used a fine thread for the strength and um, that sort of gives you an idea of the size. Um, it's only going to be a 3 8 diameter lead screw, basically. Um, here's just some of the other uh, random parts on this one. This one's not as, as many of the critical components. Uh, here would be the, the very bottom base. Uh, there's a T-slot, and I'll look at the watchmaker's lathe here shortly to, to kind of get an explanation of how this thing will attach um, and then the running slots uh, for the travel and there will be dow pin holes um, to help with the preloading as well as threaded holes to put the, um, the the shaft housings on and I'm most likely going to make this a, a bushing some type of bronze bearing bushing uh, with a little oiling point in there um, and then there's also the um, the other slide which is essentially uh, the same thing it has the threaded hole that goes through it um, you see I, I'm counterboard down um, eh, how deep is that 
a fair amount, maybe a half of an inch or more. So it's not actually going to be threaded the entire way through. And I'm hoping that's going to just help help make it all a little better. Um, the, the challenge here is going to be obviously the precision of making something like this in a home shop. Um, again, it, it doesn't have to be, in my opinion, completely um, machine perfect because it is just going to be operating on a watchmaker's lathe. Um, so I think as long as I get the functionality that I want out of it, um, I don't need to make it super robust and sort of over-engineer it. Um, but most of the material I'm going to use is going to be uh, either A2 tool steel or 4140, some pre-hard or, or something along those lines. Um, and uh, I'll most likely um, either surface grind uh, all the mating surfaces, even though I do plan on... Um, I do plan on keeping a, a, a tiny gap in between the mating surfaces, um, but I will most likely surface grind them at least. I doubt that I'm going to scrape them, again, because it's for a watchmaker's lathe, but we'll see. Um, and I think I, I have some other ideas on maybe some uh, chip guards to kind of protect the ways from the, the fine chips, uh, things like that, some maybe fabric or some other... Uh, material to stop chips from getting in without getting too much in the way so this is just sort of an overview of the the whole design concept here and, and sort of what I'm trying to do and uh, we can look at the watchmakers lathe and see how all this is going to come together so here is the lathe um, you can see the the flip up tool post here um, that is the tool rest where all of the turning is done by resting a tool bit on here to um, do any of the turning. Now you can see down here is how it's attached. There's a, a nut that holds it on and um, on the underside of this is a, a T-slot. Um, so I can take that off and kind of get an idea of that. So you can see as you loosen it, it can move all around here. Um, it can slide in and out, and there's the T-slot um, that that will hold it hold it in. So there's actually a spring in there. I don't really want to take it out because it's kind of a pain to put back together because of the spring. Um, but there's there's just a, a a screw with a slotted head there at the top, or with a T head at the top. Um, and again, there's a spring in there that keeps the tension down. Um, I will probably just use exactly the same uh, nut here to hold on. I, I don't plan on making a different nut. So that would be the way that this would uh, attach to the to the lathe itself. Um, and then it could be squared in various methods to um, the axis of, of the feed. And... Um, from there it would just be a matter of um, turning the handles so this is a pretty nice lathe it's a peerless uh, watchmaker's lathe it takes eight millimeter WW collets um, I have done some small turning on it it also has a indexing here an indexing pin uh, it's kinda hard to see on the back of the pulley um, haven't really used that yet, but I, I pretty much plan this year as one of my goals in here to get this machine a little bit more up to par. Um, the motor works great. It's just that the the pulleys I have problems with. I wouldn't mind uh, making a new pulley also and just sort of uh, redoing this whole spindle setup. Like I said, it works fine. Um, it just could be a little bit better. So that's my project. I plan on getting started on it here in the next uh, week or two weeks with just some of the the basic um, the bases and and the the different ways. And I'll probably do some testing on um, how I'm gonna machine 
um, the 15 degree walls on the mating parts and, and sort of master that process. I'm sure that'll take some time. But once that gets nailed down, um, shouldn't be too bad from there. So stick around for um, what'll probably be a, a pretty interesting adventure in building this thing. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.